Okay. So um, we're going to talk about the the young interface for end users this morning, uh, or this afternoon for all of you over on on that side of the water. Um, you probably have seen things online, some discussion about yummies here and there. Um, you'll get to see some screenshots and hopefully find a little bit more uh, information about what it does and, and why, it, why it exists. So, um, second slide, please. There you go. So Alex Taylor is the, the uh, lead developer of the, the project. All the code in the project is GPL. It is um, NLS capable out of the box, and it will come with a number of translations. I will talk about that in, uh, in a little bit. Um, when I say it accepts custom branding, um, it's suitable for use by resellers, and they can change the, the logo and add their own identification strings to the about box. So it's very flexible in terms of the, the, the overall look of who is providing the application. And it's useful to everyone, not just our Canoe subscribers. In fact, it's completely free. Um, it's not part of the Arcanoe subscription. Uh, next slide, please. Done. Uh, on the front end, it gives you the ability to filter uh, lists of packages, installed packages, available packages. You can filter those based on the repository, based upon whether the packages are all recent have been added recently to the repository um, packages that are updates to already installed packages and you can also sort packages by um, types of applications there are tool tips um, there are um, buttons on the button bar that you'll see each button has a fly out um, tool tip there are status icons, so as you look at the list, immediately you can tell whether a package has been installed, whether a package has an update available, whether it's a new package, and it differentiates between the look of RPMs and warping packages. And of course, there are progress bars, so if you're installing 15 things, you'll get to be able to see that it's not just sitting there letting something happen in the background, it gives you some feedback as to what's going on. Next slide, please. Yes. On the back end, it's uh, mainly Python and Rex. Uh, it's very small, uh, low disk space consumption, so it's very portable. Moving it from one system to another is very easy. It's compatible with Warp 4 and above, so there's no uh, no concern that it, it won't run on older systems. And um, the logging facility is very good, so if something does go wrong, you can find out what it was doing at the time something went wrong. Next slide, please. Yes. So here's a screenshot <clears throat> of the main Yummy uh, screen showing the installed packages on the system. The filter um, uh, criteria are up at the top, all matching packages from all repositories and all repository groups. Next slide, please. Yes. These are packages with updates. So these are packages that are already installed on the system and for which updates are available from one or more repositories. Next slide. Yeah. Yes. That's the context menu that comes up. Uh, note that install is, is grayed out because, again, these packages have already been installed. But reinstall is available, so you can force a reinstall of a package if something seems to be broken. You can uninstall from here. You can, you can apply the update 
or you can get a specific release of the package. Next slide, please. Yes. This is a list of specific releases available. Um, some older than what are on the, the system. If you look in the far right column, it's, you'll see that it says downgrade. Those are older versions of the package. And all platforms are available. Currently, at the NetLabs uh, repositories, we have three different platform versions. I386, I686, and Pentium 4. Pentium 4 is what most of us will be using these days, but every now and again, if you've got an older machine or uh, some other reason, you might need one of the other uh, platform builds. That's something that's really specific to YUM, and you can make that change in your YUM configuration. Um, remember that YUM is just a command line utility, and YUMI is a front end for that. So this makes it a little bit easier to work your way around that um, syntax. Next slide, please. Yes. Note that the updated uh, versions that are available are listed at the bottom of this list. So they are there when you, when you ask it for a specific release. Next slide. Repository management. So you can list the configured repositories. You can add, edit, and delete repositories. You can enable and disable. Um, you can even create authenticated repositories. When the Arcanoe repository comes online, that will be authenticated. Users will be able to use their um, their Arcanoe uh, credentials that they normally use to log into the website to authenticate to the Akinoe repo and get their updates straight through here, um, as well as getting, getting uh, new software to which they're entitled. And we're able to securely store those um, credentials so that they can't be just uh, copied and taken to another, another machine or uh, stolen. Next uh, screen, please. Yes. This is a list of configured repositories. Um, and you'll see that both of these repositories are enabled. You can toggle that uh, with the, from this window. And you can also right click and edit a repository. Uh, next slide, please. When creating a new repository, this is the, the dialogue that needs to be uh, completed. It's actually very simple. There are other options available when creating a, a repository. And if one knows what he or she is doing, then manipulating the, um, the repository files, uh, that information can be added but it's not something that we're throwing into Yummy at this point because this is the basic information that's needed in order to access a repository. Note the checkbox for a secure repository. When you click save on, uh, at this point, uh, you get the screen in the next slide. Go ahead. Yes. Where you enter your username and password. Username and password are hashed using information obtained from the, the DMI in the system. So it is. it should be unique to each machine. Next slide, please. Yes. Now, a lot of times you're going to have to search for a package to find what it is that you need. So you can find packages with a partial name uh, and a wild, a wild card, uh, or Perhaps find a package if you know what what DLL it is that you're missing. So you need to find a package with an included file. You can also view the package contents and you can view information about the, the package that is part of the RPM. 
Next slide. Yes. So let's say that someone says, well, you're going to need uh, live C in order to run this application. Well, we search for live C and as an included file. Next slide, please. And these are our search results. And then remember that I have the option set to show me uh, all versions of a package, not just the latest version. So 065 and 066 are available. Next slide, please. If I right click on the 065 and, and say package contents, this is the list box that, that appears. So I can see right away that the DLL I'm trying to find is contained in this package. Next slide. Yes. And if I click, uh, if I select information from the contacts menu, this is the pop-up window that shows me the, the details about that package. These, of course, are the details on the 066 package, and the previous slide was showing us the, um, the contents of the 065 package. Next slide. Yes. So obviously, not, first of all, not everyone is using YUM and RPM. Uh, there's been a lot of pushback to switching to YUM and RPM as uh, an installation and package management standard for the platform. Um, many of our applications are still packaged as warp-ins. In fact, the content in the Okinawa subscription is all warp-in. So we wanted to be able to unify the, the warp-in packages uh, or at least package management with YUM and RPM package management. And YUMI will be able to do that. We'll be able to create a repository of warping packages available on a remote server. And just like with YUM, we'll be able to select updates and new packages and install them straight from the YUMI interface. Next slide, please. What about dependencies on packages? So let's say there's a new Firefox out, and what does it do then? Well, we're working on providing some type of dependency, so some conflict um, um, detection, so that we can say, well, first of all, uh, this is going to require this DLL, this DLL, this DLL, this DLL, and then determine uh, where those uh, where those DLLs are available. I don't know if that's going to be in version 1.0. It is on the roadmap. Also, when things have been installed with uh, YUM and RPM, Normally, the warp-in database has no idea that they exist. That type of conflict um, management we also want to address. So if someone is installing um, the live seed package from warp-in, Yummy should say, this is already installed from uh, Yum and RPM. Do you want to uninstall the other package? I don't know that that's going to be in, in 1.0, but it is one of the considerations that we have, because right now there is absolutely no cooperation between the YUM da database and the WORPIN database. So this is what a list of uh, WORPIN packages uh, looks like in, in YUMMY. Notice the icon's different, so we can tell that these are WORPINs right away, and of course, on the left, we're, we can see that we've selected the list of warping packages. Next slide. These are package contents from the selected from the context menu. So we can see what's in each warping package. Next slide. Yes. 
And these are package details for warfare, which is really extracted from the, the uh, list. Next slide. Yes. In terms of languages, these are the languages that we are currently um, supporting. Um, there are a couple more that I want to add to the list, uh, including uh, Russian. Um, but these are the translators that we have um, on the translation team right now. Next slide, please. Yes. The latest data build is 0 0.80. Um, and right now, this is what is functioning in the beta. So essentially, all the young stuff that we want for 1.0 is installed and working. Uh, we have some issues with uh, secure repositories that we're working out right now. But in general, for, for the NetLabs repos, which are the two main repositories of packages for the platform right now, everything works. Um, it is uh, completely usable really by, by anyone. We're holding off on a, on a GA until we get the, the warping pieces together. Next slide, please. Yes. So as I mentioned, you have to debug the authenticated repo creation. Um, the warping repositories on remote servers we haven't, um, we haven't configured yet. That's something that will need to be done on whatever remote servers uh, are to be holding uh, collections of working archives. And we haven't fully developed that uh, framework for building those lists of files and how to present them to uh, work in uh, for, or, or to, uh, to yummy for parsing into lists. Uh, the warping install and uninstall isn't, uh, isn't done yet. We obviously need to continue to update translations because with each beta we're adding so much new stuff that the translators have to go back and redo their work and add more uh, message strings. And we haven't written the help and documentation for the program yet. Next slide. So in terms of acknowledgments, these are just some of the people who have had some involvement with the, the uh, application, whether they know it or not. Um, the DMI decode stuff, as I say, we store repository credentials, we hash that information, and we hash that using DMI decode to read the DMI in the system. Um, and we now have a completely current DMI decode. Andy Willis built that um, just a few days ago, actually. And uh, it was an update to Byte's build of DMI decode. That uh, 2.12 is the current version that's available for Linux. We now have available for OS2. Next slide. Yes. And. Um, last on the list here, uh, Yuri, um, last summer when I was testing connections to um, repos behind uh, SSL uh, using HTTPS for con uh, connectivity, there were a number of issues getting that working and uh, Yuri was very responsive to my tickets and uh, provided a lot of Python feedback for me as I was learning my way through Python because I'm not a Python guy. Next slide. Yes. There are more people who have been involved in this project. It's really been much larger than I think any of us would have initially imagined um, as we started adding features and trying to figure out 
what were what were necessary things to have in such an application we consulted with a lot of people and um i'm sure i've left more people out besides just mentioning that in, in groups the, the beta testers have been terrific um i probably have a half dozen people on the beta team and everyone provides great feedback um uh, it's it's really been a, a remarkable project to to work on and the last slide is just questions so please ask me some questions about the uh the utility i'm happy to talk about it 